just going to do a uh, video this evening um, as a review of a book I read good a few weeks back now, but um, just getting around to doing a few more videos um, recently. So this one is going to be my review of Robert Harris's Fatherland, um, which I've got up on the screen as well here. Um, Also, what's been, what's been mentioned in the book is 
is that you know very similar it's very similarly to um, after World War Two in the real world where the United States pretty much turned the engine of war on to regime change across other parts of the world whether that be the Middle East Latin America um, or any other the Caribbean as well um, and Europe too same as the Soviet Soviet Union anybody within their sphere of influence was pretty much toppled and set up in their own image um, likewise the Germans do it in this they've uh, pretty much fulfilled um, Hitler's Mein Kampf uh, destiny or their sort of his manifest destiny as you could say which was to displace people from uh, Eastern European Balkan regions and uh, the Caucasus regions which is you know, Ukraine Georgia uh, Tajikistan all these all, all, all the countries there Azerbaijan to displace the population there force them further eastward um, so you've got a, a, a bigger land base there for the greater German Reich to um, uh, in order for them to sort of push eastwards so you know it is a bit of a mirror um, to the United States really with their westward expansion in the 19th century uh, but there is a bit of a there is a terrorist uh, war going on um, or you know an insurgency conflict against the Germans that has continued a partisan sort of uh, guerrilla warfare after World War Two, and um, it's, it gets alluded to there's a lot of uh, li uh, lying going on, being very deceptive with the public, uh, much like what the um, what Napoleon would do to the did to the French, uh, which was lie about the amount of casualties, which was greatly reduced. Uh, than it really was um, and really it, it, it does mirror the United States being in Vietnam at the time as well where they are, nobody really wants to go to the east as they say because um, it's pretty much a death sentence you know it's, uh, it's, um, such as a warfare that's portrayed in the book you get other characters as well um, so the main sort of conspiratorial group are people from the Wannsee conference um, which took place in World War II with Hitler um, they are, there's an elaborate conspiracy where these characters are smuggling information uh, squirreling that information away more so about the final solution um, which in the book the domestic German population isn't really told what happened to them. It's kind of like a bit of a nod and a wink, really, between people, ordinary Germans, where when they say the, the Jews were sent east, that's pretty much a code for what really went on in the final solution. Now, there are those domestic Germans who maybe were young during the war or brought fully into the propaganda who genuinely think that they were just... Uh, just a massive amount of people were relocated from uh, Central Europe to Eastern Europe and, 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 and elsewhere. Um, there's even a, 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 a alluded to uh, letters being written from these areas where apparently they were placed when you know it's quite clear that they weren't. Um, so that's one of that's the main conspiracy. Um, but inter interwoven within that is a, a sort of a dual conspiracy where one or two of them were smuggling away fine pieces of art or maybe things, things which were not really in line with the uh, Aryan sort of white supremacist um, master race ideology of the of the Nazis as well. So they, uh, you know, you do get a couple of characters there um, who, uh, where you stumble upon, you know, a lot of hidden art. Interesting. I, you know, it's a very easy um, uh, book to follow in the sense of excitement and, 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 and the twists and turns you do find. It does give you a bit of uh, a lot of flavour for the sort of the overbearing, top-down sort of bureaucratic fascist government uh, which the Nazis ran, um, which you know effectively rendered any sort of individual uh, you know, thought or individuality. 
party was crushed literally under uh, the sort of utilitarian greater German bulk, so, uh, you know, more, more than, more, more than, more, well, and effectively it wasn't really what the people wanted, it was effectively what, what Hitler, who in the book, you know, there's a um, scheduled meeting where he's about to turn 75, and um, for his birthday there's about to be a conference with the United States president, and there's been sort of a, a cold war going on after World War II between the United States and um, Germany. And uh, in order to break that Cold War and have a bit of a detente after World War Two, uh, President John Kennedy um, was due is due to arrive in Berlin, and upon find, upon you know sort of finding their way through the labyrinth of information and the crumbs of information they're able to get from this large conspiracy to suppress all the information in regards to the camps and the final solution and the amount of death that. Uh, systematic death that the German government, uh, well, sorry, I should say the Nazi government, had put people through in World War Two and after um, World War Two. Uh, they are desperate to get that out. There is a, an interesting crisis of um, crisis of confidence with the main characters, Avi Marsh, who himself, had, you know, albeit as um, being a, a Nazi party member, is is the atypical. He's not a typical Nazi in the sense of, you know, somebody who's probably pumped up on the propaganda, um, believes every word. You know, he's very much somebody who's got individual thought, um, is a German first rather than a Nazi, which is quite important. You know, just remember that not all Nazis were Germans and not all Germans were Nazis as well. Um, but this guy is uh, he's a former submarine, uh, submarine commander. And um, he, I think, he's, I think he was a commander in a submarine, or at least in a submarine. And um, so he never really saw on land what was going on. Um, more so fighting in the uh, North Atlantic, um, in, in, as he describes in the books as well. Um, so he really wasn't exposed to what was going on with the final solution too much, being away from from the homeland, and um, only sort of exposed really. To, how the, how the war was going on to the propaganda that was um, coming through the airwaves, really. Um, so it's quite interesting to see him turn from that, you know, that, just to have that crisis of confidence. And uh, I thought that um, Robert Harris was superb in describing that. You can you can feel the visible disgust, the initial cognitive dissonance where he doesn't really believe what he's seeing. Uh, or what he's reading, or what's being alluded to, um, whereas obviously, from our sort of reality point of view, we know exactly what is being alluded to, we know exactly what certain words or phrases mean, which allude to you know, the systematic extermination of six, six million um, Jews and um, ethnic minorities, uh, disabled people, people, you know, and, uh, gay people, you know, pretty much political political enemies, um, ethnic enemies, you know, domestic enemies, pretty much anybody that the Nazi regime didn't take a liking to. Um, so we 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 know that. But seeing, see, I, I thought that that was what was very sort of f- fantastically written, but still really unnerving. Was seeing seeing it written down how he, he has that crisis of confidence and. You know, from, from the initial sort of denials of uh, when the Charlie character confronts him with the information and Xavier is picking up crumbs of information here and there from other sources um, towards the end of the book where it's quite clear that they come to an agreement that, you know, they, they're, um, they're under suspicion um, and they're on the run, really. They manage to get some information with as it pertains to the final solution, and um, tasked with trying to deliver this into the safe hands of the Americans so that they can prevent the uh, conference between President Kennedy and Hitler um, on Hitler's 75th birthday, uh, so that the world can know exactly what they did. Uh, it would it would delegitimize the regime. With the war in the East going so badly, there, there's, um, you know, and, the fact that, you know, you do get some, you, know, you look at some information where it says that particular 
fascist regimes in particular have, I mean, a, you know, any sort of authoritarian regime, unless there's a huge amount of uh, a huge amount of social technological advances, they tend to have a shelf life, unless they're being propped up with like, excep exceptional levels of sustainability from somewhere. But in the book, it's alluded to that if this scares out, that effectively this could even cause Hitler to be usurped uh, at the top of the regime or even the the country go democratic to a certain point or or maybe even just talk, have their own Vietnam and they would retreat from the east back to a more sort of, I don't know, to the Volga or somewhere in, in Eastern Europe or the Danube. Um, so what's, what's quite interesting though, another point I had, which was when you are reading the book, it's quite clear that the um, co there's a, a really good commentary by Robert Harris on the sort of, as they say, real poverty of, um, of the United States and how, how would the United States react to, uh, or the West in particular, how would the West react to this government um, who effectively came out of the Second World War alongside the United States as the main superpower in the world? Um, you know, we've seen, you know, particularly the last 25 years in the so-called war on terror that really it doesn't really matter what your ideology is. As if you are able to provide some sort of um, strategic or geopolitical service to the United States, I mean, they are at the moment the main world hegemon. Um, in this book, they are sharing that sort of uh, top tier table with Nazi Germany, but in terms of the reaction, I mean, how you know, what would, what, what would the reaction be? Um, I mean, you've seen this, you've seen the United States in our time, you know, entertain Saddam, uh, fund Saddam, uh, you know, offer offer weapons, you know, World Bank loans, IMF loans. Um, you know, they could have taken Saddam out in the early nineties if they'd wanted to, but they didn't. Um, so they re-propped him up before the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Um, you know, we've seen many other uh, regimes in which the United States are quite happy to prop up. You know, God knows how many dictators. I mean, people like Mubarak in Egypt before he was ousted by Muslim Brotherhood. Um, and then they've brought the general CC back in there. Uh, you've got Gaddafi uh, in Libya um, up until the point where you know, Gaddafi started to uh, kick the hornet's nest on multiple fronts. Um, uh, so he, he had to get rid, be got rid of. Um, same as same as ISIS as well. I mean, I mean, up until a point, ISIS was serving a pretty decent uh, service in the United States. I mean, they were, you know, uh, effectively breaking up that civil civil war that was in Iraq. Um, you know, they they gone into a country. Uh, which was Syria, which was on the list really for regime change, which you know, had the Bush regime gone on, allowed to be gone on, gone on any longer than two terms probably would have been um, a regime, regime change country as well as Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's quite interesting, quite interesting really to see how, how would the United States have played that? Would they have dished up the... Um, the information to the public and said, "Listen, look, at, you know, we can't be dealing with these people. We've got to cut them off completely. You know, we've got to embargo their economy. We've got to, um, we've got to place sanctions on their main members. We've got to stop trading with them. We've got to, you know, move our, move, we've got to, uh, you know, re-engage with our allies and have uh, mil military, you know, maneuvers and basically put themselves on a on a sort of war footing, uh, more preparedness footing because of the type of information." We, we, we know that isn't true, you know, that things like that don't happen over principle, you know, I mean, let's face it, even in our day-to-day, -day, you know, you've got China with lit, with concentration camps in Xinjiang, and you've got right next door a Disney film in a new Mulan movie, and nobody cares, you know, nobody cares that, that you've got slave labour camps there, um, that when people in province, particularly in Wuhan after the coronavirus broke out in early 2020, or maybe even before, that when they were actually welding people into their own homes, 
in China that they were then uh, sending people on trains and carriages down from Xinjiang to work the factories which were because people were basically told to stay home and they went through their own lockdown early on in 2020 so you know I mean and, and it's not to say that the people uh, and it's quite clear that in the book Robert Harris does distinguish between this as well um, in that the German people and Nazis are two different two different entities entirely um, and being a Nazi doesn't mean that you have to have, you have to be a you know a high level bureaucrat um, like for instance I'll give you an example there's a part in the book where Xavier March has got a, a bit of a, a bit of an issue with his uh, ex-wife he has custody of his child uh, occasionally they, they've got a bit of a fractious relationship in him and his ex-partner um, she is very much in that sort of patriotic um, believe the government trust in government trust in authority you know obey 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 camp and really instills that into the child as well um, the child you know it's obvious boy seeing him as an SS officer not really exposed to anything prior to the Nazi regime either is is a, is a product of the authoritarian um, fascist mindset um, totally lacking in any individuality whatsoever um, or any outside critical thinking skills a dissociation with who is responsible for him where it comes to a point in the, in the book where Xavier is looking to get away from Berlin and leave the country permanently to get away from you know his chases in the SS and his son actually calls and tells him where he is and that's quite a chilling a, a chilling sort of um, duality really I say duality but a chilling contrast between the father and the son and it's very it's very so sort of Soviet Union like I can't remember the name of the boy, but there was a statue in the Soviet Union of a boy who had heard his father and mother talking bad about the communist government. I think it was during Stalin's time. And uh, this boy had pretty much shopped his parents to and, and told the local commissar, whoever it was, um, listen, my mum and dad are speaking bad of the regime. They're not fully on board, you know. Um, but I'm good. I'm good at telling you, aren't I? Well, the, the parents were sent to Siberia and to pound rocks pretty much until death. The boy had a statue built for him in, I think it was Petrograd, St. Petersburg. I think it was. But it was one of the, from what I remember reading before, there was one of the statues when the, the Soviet Union finally fell in the 90s. Um, that, that was one of the first statues that was pulled down uh, by people and removed from public view. But, you know, that's, that's one example in this book now how, you know, like I said, the difference between more than a Nazi, a Nazi and, a, 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 and a German person looking out for their own um, and their, you know, pretty much human, human interest, you know. Um, but overall, I mean, it's a superb story, uh, a really good crime, no, crime detective novel. Um, I'd, I'd say if, if you like history, then definitely, I think it's one of the best. Um, alternate, alternative uh, history books I've, I've, I've ever read. Um, one of the best reviewed I've ever seen as well, to be honest with you. Um, he, you know, he's, he's a fantastic author, Robert Harris, and this is uh, quite an old book from the 80s, if I remember rightly. But yeah, definitely pick it up if you can. And uh, they did make a movie of, of this as well, if I remember rightly. There was a movie, I didn't watch it before I finished the book. Um, uh, it's quite some big actors in it actually as well, Rutger Hauer, Miranda Richardson as well. Um, and so it was decently reviewed. It was more of a TV movie than anything. It was it was in cinema, I don't think. Um, but six and a half out of ten isn't too bad actually. I thought the book was, was way better than the movie. Um, although the, the 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 movie does at the end sort of play up the uh, uh, the drama. Um, of, what, of the final sort of smuggling of the information across the lines to the Americans than the book does. Um, I think the book the book leaves it open ended really. Um, like I said about what your perceptions is about what you, what do you think the West would have done with that information? 
you know, do you, if you think that they would have done something principal about it, that speaks to how you see the world and, you know, you, you, sort of your motivations um, and, and your, own atti- your own sort of beliefs and what they would have done. I don't think there's a wrong answer, really, even if, you know, like myself, you know, you're a little bit more cynical and maybe they, they would have released parts of it, but not all of it. Um, you know, there, there's always a game played on this level, isn't there? I mean, you, you, would, you, you would dish it all out. You would, you would, you would parcel out a few nuggets of information which would maybe discredit the regime. But not enough to diminish it entirely. You want you would rather a weakened enemy than a totally defeated enemy, um, because our defeated enemy can galvanise themselves and come back later. So um, yeah, but overall, fantastic book. Uh, pick it up if you can. It's a really uh, cheap book. I mean, you can get it for like one pence uh, used on Amazon as well if you pay for the um, uh, pay for the delivery as well. But yeah, like. You know, you often find these types of books maybe in like the works or HMV, uh, random bookshops for like you know uh, one or two pounds. So hopefully um, you'll be able to pick this one up. But uh, yeah, it's a fantastic uh, story, um, definitely worth the investment of the time as well. Uh, I'm going to give this rating. So this was going. This is going to be four stars out of five, um, and hopefully with uh, with this being read now, I've picked up a couple of other. Robert Harris books as well. Um, I will be reviewing those once I get around to reading them too. But in the meantime, you know, do enjoy Fatherland. It is a brilliant book. Um, historical fiction, like I say, four out of five stars. Um, enjoy it. Let me know what you think of it. And um, uh, st- stand by. I've got a few more videos on the way as well of some other books I've read recently as well.